Coles County, Illinois is full of hauntings. Like the rest of the Midwest, the old farmhouses spread out over miles of cornfields and the remnants of westward expansion are all perfect backdrops for the stories of ghosts and demons that terrorize the small towns they occupy. Charleston, the county seat and home of Eastern Illinois University, holds many of these stories, like Pemberton Hall and the Will Rogers Theater. Today, let's venture about 20 minutes out of town to the absolute middle of nowhere. The airtight bridge crosses the Embora River at a seemingly random point in the middle of some cornfields. The peaceful and rather beautiful patch of trees around the bridge make the area the perfect place to spend an afternoon, but there's almost never anyone out there. Airtight Bridge is more famous for a long unsolved murder. On October 19th, 1980, two men discovered a body just 50 feet up the river from the bridge. It was partially dismembered, missing the hands, feet, and head. In 1980, no one could identify the body, and it was buried with an anonymous headstone. Henry Lee Lucas, now known as the Confession Killer, became a prime suspect. Lucas, who was imprisoned for the murders of two people close to him, confessed to over 200 other murders. Law enforcement determined initially that all of his confessions were true. Eventually, journalists investigated his claims and found they were highly improbable. Lucas may have been confessing for the rewards of nice meals and better living conditions that were afforded him during investigations. Others said that the reason law enforcement didn't bother to do any of the math to confirm that he couldn't have killed that many people in such a short time was because putting his name down meant they could close cases and take them off the books. But if Lucas didn't kill the anonymous woman, who did? Twelve years after the body was found, the Riordan family of Texas filed a missing persons case for Deanna Riordan Small. Until that point, the husband, Thomas Small, had been resistant to Lister as missing since he said they had gotten in a fight, so he believed she had gone to another man. Deanna's DNA matched that of the body found near the bridge. During investigations, Thomas Small said some sus suspicious things, but called in a lawyer and the questioning fell flat with too little evidence to go on. In 2016, Lieutenant Christina Stephen got approval to travel to Texas to question him as part of an effort to close old cold cases. Small was 70 years old by this time, and investigators said they felt they were running out of time to talk to him. During questioning, he eventually confessed to the murder and provided more details about the case. Apparently, while Small still lived in Illinois, he and his wife got into an argument which escalated to a physical fight. He claimed to have killed her by accident when he hit her over the head with a fire poker. In his panic, he hid the body in the attic until the smell became too strong. He put her body in his car and drove around until he found somewhere he felt the body wouldn't be found. His daughter, too young to be left home alone, was in the car with him. Once he came across the bridge, he unloaded the body, removed the feet, hands, and head, then took them home, burned them, and threw them in the Vermilion River in an attempt to keep the body from being identified. In 2017, Small pled guilty and was put in prison. Even though the case has finally been closed, visitors say they feel an unnatural stillness around the airtight bridge. Cars stall when travelers try to cross it. Some even claim to have seen ghostly figures standing on the bridge. After 40 years, spirits still remain on the site where such a melodramatic story played out.